the Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Be Young Again. It's new, it's better than ever. It's the new, better than ever Jell-O. Now made even more delicious by Jell-O's wonderful locked-in flavor. A flavor that is locked right inside Jell-O's crystal-like particles where it can't escape. No need to be afraid that your gelatin dessert will leak flavor while waiting to be used. When you open the package, you can be sure that every last luscious bit of Jell-O's grand goodness will be right there, untouched by time, unchanged in any way. By means of a new Jell-O process, all of Jell-O's full, vivid flavor is held captive in the tiny Jell-O particles. Lock there till you dissolve the particles and let their rich flavor pour out into a swell dessert. So get several packages of the new Jell-O tomorrow, friends, and see what a big difference Jell-O's locked-in flavor makes. In Jell-O, the flavor never goes away. We put it in, and it's there to stay. was Be Young Again, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there being only 24 shopping days till Christmas, we bring you that 24-carat comedian with a heart of gold, Jack Benny. <laughs> um, um, hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that was very sweet of you. Gee, I'm a 24 karat comedian with a heart of gold. Did you like my introduction, Jack? Yes. In fact, if I was an imbecile, I'd fall for it. <laughs> Every year at this time, you give me that same hooey. You know, Don, you're about as subtle as your stomach. <laughs> if you get what I mean. Well, maybe so, Jack, but Christmas will soon be here, and you know the old saying, a word to the wise is sufficient. Don, here's another saying that's not quite so old. Don't count your presents until Benny gets off the nest and cackles. <laughs> <laughs> but now that the subject's come up, uh, what would you like for Christmas, Don? Something for the house or something personal? Oh, anything at all, Jack. But I do hope it's more practical than what I got last Christmas. Oh, I've forgotten, Don. What did I give you last year? A sarong. <laughs> A sarong? Oh, my goodness, then I, then I must have given Dorothy L'Amour your present. Oh, no wonder she hasn't spoken to me since. What'd you give her, Jack? Oh, Don, I'm so embarrassed, I can't tell you. Oh, go ahead. What was it? Well, Don, you know how you were gaining weight last year. Uh-huh. So Dorothy got a 54-inch girdle. <laughs> and, Don, here's the payoff. When you pull the zipper, it plays, why don't we do this more often? <laughs> No kidding, isn't that? I kind of surprised you there, didn't I? <laughs> no, really, isn't that awful? Hello, Jack. What are you blushing about? Mary, I just found out that by mistake last Christmas, I gave Dorothy L'Amour Don's girdle. Can you imagine that? Well, don't worry. She probably thought it was a hammock. <laughs> yeah, I never thought of that. Say, Jack, I want to get one thing straightened out right now. What? Before I buy your Christmas present, what are you going to give me? <laughs> well, that's a fine spirit. Mary, half the pleasure of getting Christmas presents is a surprise. Oh, sure. <laughs> Remember how thrilled you were last year when I gave you that brand new Plymouth? You gave me a ticket on a Plymouth. <laughs> All right, I was just as mad as you were when you didn't win the drawing. <laughs> just as mad. Matter, you wanted Congress to investigate. Well, what are they down there for? Anyway, I'm not going to tell you what I'm giving you this Christmas. Well, give me a clue. Is it big or little? Oh, it's not so little. <laughs> well, is it heavy or light? Oh, <laughs> medium. <laughs> well, do you wear it or eat it? Well, you can wear it or you can eat it. Jeepers, a rabbit. <laughs> Never mind. 
Say, Mary, have you got Jack's present all picked out? I sure have. What are you going to give me, Mary? Well, Jack, you know how crazy you are about swimming. Yeah. Well, I'm getting you a bathing suit with short pants. <laughs> oh, goody. Now I won't trip when I die. <laughs> I can go along with a gag, sister. <laughs> you know me. Say, hey, Mr. Benny, you know what I'm going to give you for Christmas? Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Uh, what are you going to give me for Christmas, kid? Is that what I said? <laughs> yes. What are you going to give me? Oh, well, you've been so nice to me, Mr. Benny. I'm going to give you a brand new photograph of myself. Hmm. A photograph, eh? Yeah, and I'm going to write on it with gratitude from your tenor, Dennis Day. Hmm. Well, look, kid, unless that picture is surrounded by a silver frame, you better write E-X in front of that tenor. <laughs> Put a frame on it. Well, I'll have to think it over. You better not. That's how Kenny Baker happens to be with Fred Allen. <laughs> Gee, you're hot today, aren't you? <laughs> You said it, huh? Why, Jack, I understand Kenny left you because Alan offered him more money. Well? I wouldn't leave you for more money, Mr. Benny. Well, thanks. I wouldn't leave you for all the money in the world. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks very much. You're my dream man. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Never knows when to stop. And furthermore... To... Hiya, Jackson. Boy, are you lucky I'm here today. Oh, hello, Phil. What do you mean, lucky? Well, me and the boys were playing down in San Diego last night, and my fans just wouldn't let me go. You mean you went over great, eh? Great. Jackson, would you believe me if I told you we turned away over 10,000 people? No, I wouldn't. Uh... <laughs> oh, you see, Frankie, I made it too big. <laughs> you certainly did. And on our way back this morning, we played Laguna Beach, Seal Beach, and San Pedro. Now, hold on, Phil. There are no ballrooms open at that time of the day. Who needs ballrooms? They got street corners, ain't they? <laughs> what? You play street corners? Sure. We get out of the bus, give out a couple of tunes, and take whatever the people drop in the hat. Hmm. Well, that's a great system if you're not too proud. How'd you do in Seal Beach, Phil? Oh, terrific. We got 20 dimes, 8 quarters, and 15 halibut. <laughs> halibut? Say, that's my favorite fish. Speak to the piano player. 22 cents a pound. <laughs> Oh, you've got the fish and the piano, eh? Well, this will be the first time Charlie will be able to play a scale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a Lulu. <laughs> Say, Dennis, I was wondering what was... <laughs> I was wondering what was dripping out of the piano there. Say, Dennis, uh, how about a song? Who, me? No, my Aunt Molly. Now, let's have your song. Okay. Wait a minute. Come in. Say, Mr. Harris, what do you want this bucket of ice? Ice? Yeah, bud, just dump it in the piano. I've got to keep them fish cold. Well, if that isn't the most... <laughs> Phil! Phil, what's the matter with you? That'll ruin the piano. And get a load of that sign. Phil Harris and his orchestra. It's the fish that smell, folks. Well, that's just protection. Sing, Dennis. And the guy's been with me five years and wants to charge me 22 cents a pound. <laughs> Magnolias in the air Still 
whisper to my heart that you will soon be there and once again we'll share our fragrant life the magic of magnolias in the night Magnolias in the Moonlight, sung by Dennis Day. Excellent, Dennis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction this evening... Hey, Mr. Benny. What? Have you seen those bamboo frames they've got for pictures? They're very novel. I don't want a bamboo frame. You said you were full of gratitude. Say it with silver. I want a nice, heavy silver frame. Not too heavy, Jack. You'll have to take a cab to the hawk shop. <laughs> I'm not going to hawk it. And now, folks, as I started to announce, this evening... This evening, we are going to present our version of that immortal drama, that outstanding Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer production, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, thank you, boys. You can go back to the Samaritan Institute now. Now, in, um, in this epic, in this epic, I will play Spencer Tracy's part, the dual role of Jekyll and Hyde, Dr. Jekyll, the kind, gentle, lovable character who, after taking a certain powerful drug, changes into Mr. Hyde, the fiendish, horrible maniac. Gee whiz, Jack, that's pretty hard to do, isn't it? Yes, especially Mr. Hyde, but I'll be all right. I was rehearsing out in the hall before the show. Uh, didn't you see me with my face all screwed up and my, my tongue hanging out? Was that Mr. Hyde? I thought your feet hurt. <laughs> Mary, my feet kill me, but not that much. Now, let's see. Oh, Jack, here comes your gag man, Belly Laugh Barton. Oh, yes, yeah. Hello, Belly. Hello. Did you send for me, Grandma? Uh, yes, um, uh, we're, uh, we're doing a play tonight, and I want you to act in it. What do you mean, act? I'm a writer. Listen, Belly. Hmm. Now, listen, Belly. You've got a three-way contract with me, writing, acting, and publicity man. You know that. Publicity man? Yes. What does he do, draw your picture on fences? <laughs> no, he's supposed to get my name in the papers. And incidentally... Phil, will you please stop selling fish during the program? Now, please. Well, that lady in the first row wants some. <laughs> Madam, you'll have to wait until after the show. <laughs> now, Belly. Uh, Belly. <laughs> I have to get him another name. <laughs> now, Belly, in our play tonight, you're going to be a newsboy. Okay. By the way, did that rabbit gag get a laugh? Oh, it was all right, but you'll have to do better next week. Well, maybe Miss Livingston didn't put the gag over. Maybe she didn't sell it. Listen, Junior, I punched my brains out on that gag. <laughs> Mary, leave him alone. Writers don't grow on bushes. Sorry, Belly. All dames are alike. They're always beefing. <laughs> yeah. You said it. Man's best friend is his dog. Ah, folks, what other program takes time out from the hokum to bring you such pearls of wisdom? That reminds me. 
Say, Pearl, why don't you go down to the neighborhood grocer and ask him for a package of Jell-O? Who's Pearl? My cook. Oh. She knows that Jell-O has that new locked-in flavor. Oh, oh. Goodbye, Pearl. Hmm. <laughs> well, Don, you're certainly quick on the trigger tonight. Now, getting back to our play, folks, this will go on immediately after a... <laughs> Phil, take off that rubber apron. It's time for a band number. <laughs> now, go ahead. Okay, Jackson. What a guy. Dennis, remember, that bamboo frame is out. Keaton Smiling played for the first time on the air by John Philip Harris <laughs> and his orchestra. You know something, Jackson? The boys in the army camps all over the country were listening to that song just now. Well, I hope they enjoyed it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our play, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Take it, Don. The opening scene, ladies and gentlemen, takes place in Dr. Jekyll's office in early morning. As the curtain rises, we find his two secretaries seated at their desks. Curtain. Music. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Jekyll's office. This is his secretary speaking. No, but I expect him any minute. Thank you, I'll tell him. Goodbye. Hello, Mr. Hyde's office. <laughs> yeah, this is the secretary talking. Now he isn't in if he wants heaven help you. <laughs> what? Goodbye yourself. <laughs> Gee, I hope Dr. Jekyll is himself today, not that horrible Mr. Hyde. Well, I hope he is Mr. Hyde, so he'll think I'm beautiful. <laughs> Here he comes now. Ah, oh, good morning, Miss Jones. Good morning, Dr. Jekyll. Are there any messages? Yes, Doctor. Mr. Allen called and said he couldn't pay his bill. Mr. Allen, will you tell Fred not to worry about it? Any time at all will suit me. You see, Miss Jones... The poor boy doesn't earn much on the radio. He gets paid by the laugh, you know. <laughs> anyway, don't press him for the money. All right, Doctor. In fact, Miss Jones, just tear up his bill. See how sweet I am, folks, before I take the drug? Hmm? Uh, by the way, Doctor, there's a patient in the waiting room. He's very anxious to see you. All right, send him in. Ah, oh, good morning, young man. Good morning, Doctor. My name is Fingerwave, Otis J. Fingerwave. <laughs> well, uh, sit down, Mr. Fingerwave. Uh, what seems to be the trouble? I've got a terrible affliction, Doctor. I walk in my sleep. You do? Uh, how often does this occur? Every night. Every night I walk in my sleep. Hmm. Well, where do you live? All over. <laughs> That's too bad. Well, look, young man, there really isn't a cure for your condition, but as long as you're here, I'll check you over. Now, stick out your tongue and say, ah. Come on, say, ah. Ah. Mm, that'll be two dollars. Next. <laughs> Next patient, please. Next. Can I try for the four dollar ah? <laughs> 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 
No, that'll be all, young man. Goodbye. Goodbye, doctor. <laughs> Anyone else, Miss Jones? Oh, yes, Dr. Jekyll. Miss Carol Lombard just called and wants you to come over to her house right away. Carol Lombard? What's wrong with her? Uh, she's making a picture with Jack Benny and she can't keep a thing on her stomach. <laughs> Hmm. Kay Francis had the same trouble. I'll run over later. Oh, doctor, your newsboy is here. Oh, Johnny? Hello, Johnny. Hello, Dr. Jekyll. You want a paper today? Yes, yes. Here you are, sir. And here's a dollar. Keep the change. Gee, a 95-cent tip. Thanks, Dr. Jekyll. That's all right, Johnny. <laughs> I'll be back later, Miss Jones. Uh, uh, wait for me, will you, my dear? Yes, doctor. <laughs> Gee, he's a sweet man. <laughs> It is midnight, and we find Dr. Jekyll returning to his office after a busy day calling on his patients. Oh, what a hectic day. And goodness, look at the hour. Any calls, Miss Jones? No, but Mr. Fingerwave came by a few moments ago. Oh, was he walking in his sleep? I think so. He had a do not disturb sign pinned on his pajamas. <laughs> well, he must get his rest, you know. Miss Jones, I've had a very bad day, and I'm frightfully tired. Will you give me a glass of water, please? Yes, Doctor. And have you seen my powders around anywhere. Oh, here they are. Yes, my powders. Oh, Dr. Jekyll, Dr. Jekyll, please don't take those powders. It's all right, Miss Jones. Don't worry. But, Doctor, you know what they always do to you. Please don't. Quiet, Miss Jones. Quiet. There. Please, please don't take that stuff again. <laughs> Oh, doctor, doctor, why did you do that? It's all right, Miss Jones. It's all right. Oh, Dr. Jekyll! Mr. Hyde to you. Get back. Get back to your desk before I break every bone in your body. <laughs> Get back, you little worm. Where's my other secretary? Here I am! <laughs> oh, you are, are you? Where have you been? None of your business. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. I'll take a letter to Fred Allen. Dear rat. So you can't pay that bill you owe me, eh? Well, you get that money here by tomorrow morning, or I'll put your adenoids back in. That's all. <laughs> oh, it's you. You want a paper, Mr. Hyde? Yes. That'll be five cents. Take it out of that dollar I gave you when I was Jekyll. <laughs> and hand over that change, or I'll kick your teeth out. <laughs> I'm going out for a walk now. A nice, long walk. And before I come back, someone will be dead. Murdered. Murdered. <laughs> and it may be that fish peddler. Scene three, Dr. Jekyll's office the following morning. Yes, yes. I'll tell him as soon as he comes in. Goodbye. Good morning, Dr. Jekyll. Boy, have I got a hangover. <laughs> um, any calls, Miss Jones? Yes, Doctor. There's a gentleman waiting in your office. Thank you. Wow, what a head. I gotta go back to liquor. Those powders are killing me. <laughs> Oh, well. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, doctor. My name is Beaumont. Tex Beaumont. Tex Beaumont. That name is familiar. What can I do for you? Well, doctor, I'm in a horrible predicament. You see, I'm a cowboy actor, a star in Western pictures. But unfortunately, I work very little. Yes, yes, go on. The reason for that, doctor, is my speaking voice. My voice is much too beautiful for a cowboy. Uh-huh. In fact, I'm not at all convincing. Even my horse laughs at me. <laughs> well, that is unfortunate. But I don't see how... But you must help me. You must. 
You see, when I go out a shooting and a killing, no one's a believing it. <laughs> well, as I say, Tex, I'd like to help you. But I'm afraid changing your voice is a little out of my... Out of my... Hey, wait a minute. Maybe I can help you. You see this powder here? Yes. Well, by mixing it with water, an unusual thing sometimes happens. It may even help you. Doctor, doctor, what are you doing? I'm not going to take it. Not the way I feel. <laughs> now, Tex. Yes, doctor? I want you to drink this. It may change your voice, your personality, maybe your whole career. Oh, doctor. I don't know how to thank you for what you're... You can thank me later. Drink. Drink. Drink it all. That's it. Now, just a little more. Good. He's twitching. Now, Tex, how do you feel? Tell me. How do you feel? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm a good kind of healthy. What? What was that? Say that again. I beg your pardon? Quick, quick, drink some more. Oh, okay, here it goes. Never mind, you don't have to. Well, Tex, you sound like a real cowboy now. Yeah, but my teeth are a little long, ain't they? <laughs> don't worry, they'll stop growing when they reach your chest. <laughs> okay, thanks, Doc. I'll never forget you for this. For it's blood on the battle. <laughs> That man's voice was strangely familiar. I wonder if it was... Oh, no, it couldn't have been. Play, Phil. Friends, make this test. First, open a box of the new Jell-O and smell it. Notice there's no sweet, fruity odor, no telltale aroma to warn of escaping flavor, because Jell-O's delicious flavor is locked inside the Jell-O particles where it can't leak out. Second, put a few of these magic Jell-O particles on your tongue and taste them. Notice how moisture unlocks their glorious flavor and lets it gush out, just as it does when you dissolve the Jell-O in a dessert. Third, actually make up a dessert and see the wonderful richness that Jell-O's locked-in flavor gives it. Try Jell-O's peach and banana mold. Make up one package of lime Jell-O, as you usually do, then arrange one half cup of canned sliced peaches on the bottom of the mold and pour the Jell-O over them. Slice a banana into the Jell-O and chill until firm. And there you'll have the final proof of how extra good a treat like this can be made with Jell-O's locked-in flavor. Remember, Jell-O is different because Jell-O gives you all the flavor, always. This is the last number of the ninth program in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that the man who sounded like Andy Devine on tonight's program was Elliot Lewis and Andy Devine. <laughs> See how I clear things up? Uh, good night, folks. Oh, Phil, uh, 19 cents a pound. No use getting stuck with them. <laughs> This is the time of year, folks, when pies are most popular. So why not serve a delicious pie as one of your desserts next week? Try a banana cream pie made the quick, easy, inexpensive way with Jell-O vanilla pudding. This grand pudding makes the smoothest, creamiest filling you ever saw. And when you blend it with sliced bananas, well, there's just nothing better. So tomorrow, when you order Jell-O, ask for Jell-O vanilla pudding, as well as those two other Jell-O puddings, chocolate and butterscotch. Jell-O puddings are just like grandma's, only more so. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony, Incorporated.